Welcome back to our webcast series on perspective projection. In this video we're going to look at the one-point perspective of a cylindrical object. So all the principles that we've previously seen in our previous videos are still hold true for our one-point perspective. Uh, the main difference here is that the object shape itself has changed. Instead of going from prisms and objects with corners and straight edges, here we're dealing with an object that has a curved surface. So the approach and the principles underpinning it are exactly the same, just the method that we use to deal with our curved surface changes slightly. So to start we'll have a look at the question itself of the exercise and just kind of get a feel for it. So you can see from our 3D view here, here we have our cylinder tipped over onto its side, so it's a cylindrical prism. Uh, we have our spectator, we have our horizon line, our picture plane and our ground line all set up here. Likewise in our 2D view we have our spectator, we have our plan view of our cylinder seen here as our rectangle, we have our picture plane, our ground line and our horizon line. So we're going to use that to go and draw the perspective view of our object. So before we begin there's just two pieces of information that we should notice before we start. Um, when we look at the object the first thing we should notice is that have we any edges or faces on our object resting against the picture plane. And you can see from our 3D view, this front circular face here is resting up against the picture plane. And that's important because, as we've seen in our previous exercises, any lines, edges, or surfaces resting against the picture plane will be the same size in our perspective view. So in this case here, our front face is resting up against the picture plane, so that will be exactly the same. It'll be the same shape, and it'll be the same size in our perspective view. So that's our first um, thing to look at or to notice about it. The second thing to notice about it is if we look at the back surface here, here we can see the back surface. If we look maybe over here in our 2D view, we can see the back surface indicated with this line here. That is parallel with the picture plane. And that's important because any surface parallel with the picture plane is going to remain the same shape in our perspective view. The size of it might appear foreshortened, so it might appear smaller as it goes further off into the distance, but the shape of it is going to maintain the same. And that's going to be the same no matter whether it's a circular um, shape like what we have here, so we have a, a circle, or if it's square or flat, or um, any sort of a shape. As long as it's parallel, as long as the surface is parallel with the picture plane, it will appear the same shape, so the shape won't be distorted. So with those two things in mind, we're going to look at creating the perspective view of our object. So we're going to begin the question in the same way that we've began our previous exercises. We're going to start off by locating the vanishing points. So our vanishing point is located by looking parallel with any of our directions that we want to move in. So in this case, we're going to take the center to center, or like, like so, there's our center line, also the same direction as the edges of our object go. So we, our spectator looks parallel to that, and where his gaze crosses the picture plane is going to give us our vanishing point. So in our plan view, we look parallel to our edges in our center line, and where that crosses the horizon line gives us our vanishing point. So there's our vanishing point located. Um, with our vanishing point located, we can just begin by just drawing in the front surface here. So we can see it hasn't changed shape, it hasn't changed size, so whatever distance the radius is, that's going to be the same distance our object is off the ground line. So that's still the same height off the ground line. Um, likewise, whatever radius we have is going to maintain the same. So we're going to just draw a line from the center straight across to the edge, that's the distance of our radius. We're going to mimic that over here in our 2D view. So this is our perspective view of our object, the front face, exactly the same size as what it would have been in our original shape. So the next thing we want to do is go and draw in the back surface. Like we said, we know it's going to be circular, so we don't have to worry about dividing it up or subdividing it into a number of points in that. We know that all we need is the center point and one other point on the circle to locate um, basically where we put our compass. So we're going to start doing that. We're going to, first of all, just illustrate that by drawing in a little plane. So here we can see we have our center point moving back along our center line here to the center point on the back. 
and we're going to locate that we're going to start with this point we're going to use that to locate our center point at the back and likewise we're going to use this point over here on the left hand side to locate a similar point on the back surface so that's what we're going to try and achieve so we're going to take that one by one each of those points individually so we're going to begin first of all with the center point so our center point moves back from the front here to the back center point here like that so it's moving in this direction so it goes to our vanishing point vp1 and we have the height of it taken care of here so now we need to locate the position of it so we'll just see that over here in our 3d view there's our center point of that to find the position of it we take the point from our plan view project it down to our spectator and where that line crosses the picture plane project it up into our perspective view and where it crosses our height line well there's our center point located in our perspective view so exactly the same over here in our 3d view there's the center joined to our spectator and where that crosses our height line our picture plane gives us the position of our center in our perspective view so we do exactly the same thing then with our radius line here so we go say take this point take it off back into the distance back to our vanishing point because we're moving from this point here now straight back to locate our back point here so there's he is there there he is in perspective we locate the position for our back point by bringing it down to our spectator where it crosses the picture plane project it up and we can see there's the same thing in our 3d view so there's our line drawn in so there's our radius for our original view there's our radius for our surface off in the distance so you can see it's clearly it's reduced down now we know because our surface is parallel with the picture plane it's going to remain still a circle so we can just get our compass and we can draw in our circle so there's our front surface there's our back surface there's our front surface here and there's our back surface here like so um, and really the question is pretty much finished now all we need to do is just draw in the actual edges and the way we do that is with our ruler we can just draw a tangent going from this circle to this circle here it's common enough that people try and join center to center here but we're just drawing in a tangent so offer up your set square to it just draw an tangent here and likewise a tangent from the two circles on this side here like, like so um, you can see I've also filled in what would be visible and what would be in hidden detail we can see where that tangent meets the circle here that's from there to the opposite tangent is going to be visible and anything inside that is going to be in hidden detail now in a lot of perspective questions we don't put in hidden detail in this ca case um, I said I'd put it in just to show that it still is a circle and um, that it hasn't changed shape so there's exactly the same thing in our perspective view for our 3d and we can just shade that in then in both views so there is our perspective located for our cylinder and um, a one point perspective of a cylinder so again i hope this has been some help to you thank you very much